I will testify to love. If you reckon notice the song, it's one of the all-time award-winning songs, Testify to Love. One of the lead singers is today's special guest, Jody McGuire. What, you think I could, you know, just pump up a little something, something remix? You know, Holy Spirit activate, you know, something like that. I will testify to love. I said testify to love. Come on, somebody, testify. Jesus, boys, back in the house, drop. Your collar, drop, drop, your collar, what? Aloha Ohana, welcome to Living Hope TV. Today is another epic episode. This time with a national recording artist loved around the world, Jody McBrayer of Avalon and Kena's Voice. Chee hoo! He's an all-time favorite. Yes, he is for many of us. We are so excited, Don. How do we score someone so big? Well, actually, it goes back to the 1990s when we were doing the Christian concerts at Hawaii Theater. Ever since then, he's been back as a soloist with Avalon, and now he is here today with us for our show, Living Hope. You know, as a radio DJ, we play a lot of Avalon, especially at Christmas time. But I have been a fan since the early release in the late 90s, Testify to Love. So anointed. Yes, and there is more to love and to testify. Jody went on to a solo career, a new band called Kana's Voice, then back to Avalon. And right now, he's with both bands. But Don, he just wrote a phenomenal book. I love the book, and in it, Jody goes head on with tough topics that can be controversial in the church. In fact, he goes head on with the church for not talking about it. He sure did. Well, we won't reveal just yet what those topics are since Jody's coming to share personally, but get ready for a really meaty talk story time coming up quick. It's Jody McRare, one of your favorite singing artists. Meanwhile, here comes a local island favorite. It's our special segment called Good News Hawaii. Enjoy! Let's get ready to choo choo Yeah, you! <laughs> it's time for Good News Hawaii. By the way, did you know that focusing on good is a daily health habit that leads to huge health rewards? Cha ching cha ching cha ching! Oh, did you just hit a jackpot? No, I hit a Jesus jackpot. That's infinity times better than a normal jackpot. Cha ching cha ching cha ching! I love it. Gratitude is God's jackpot as it sees God's goodness in our lives. That's a filter with great rewards in our social lives, our relationships, our emotions are better, our personalities are more attractive. Even our health and career is blessed by gratitude. It's a win-win, God wins. And that's the heart behind Good News Hawaii. We focus on the good because gratitude changes our heart, our perspective, and our world. Like I said, Jesus jackpot. Ching, ching, ching. For real, a recent Harvard study even proved that people who intentionally made time to give thanks not only felt happier, but they also built stronger relationships and were physically healthier too. Just five gratitude statements a day will keep the bad away. Let's try it right now. First up, I'm grateful to be back to school. I'm grateful for the privilege of living right here in Hawaii. I'm grateful that events are back and we can spend time physically together again. I'm grateful for you that you are right here with us right now. And I'm grateful for an attitude of gratitude right here on Good News Hawaii. Oh, that was easy, a high five of gratitude statements. Now, your turn. Try doing a high five of gratitude statements every day and see how it supercharges your life in a God great way. Ching, ching, ching. And as we always say, don't just look for the good news, be, be the, the good, good news. news. Aloha. Aloha Ohana. We are here again with Jody McBrayer, singer, songwriter, worship leader, and minister. And Jody, I just want to say, and for Ohana there, you are Ohana. Oh, you are yes. family because Thank you. we got to know you in the 90s when you first came here with Avalon and we were doing the concerts at the Hawaii Theater. Right. It was something new for everyone in Hawaii. But I want to jump right in and thank you for ministering to all of our congregation and the people of Hawaii. It was just amazing. So we've known you for decades. 
but what have you been up to, especially with COVID and everything that's been going on? Let's catch up for the Ohana. Oh gosh, well, uh, quite a bit. I mean, you know, the life did slow down a little with COVID, I think, as it did for everybody. Um, but it was a great opportunity for me to finish a book. So I, I, I finished oh. a book that I've been working on for three years. <laughs> it took me a minute. Um, I, I wouldn't say putting the name, the, the thing author next to your name. I always kind of like, mm, OK, <laughs> I am. But it took a lot of work. Um, but, you know, I sing with Avalon again. Avalon's right. gotten back together and we're now Yay. called Avalon Worship. So it's like a, it's a collective. So it's the four. But then we also have some songwriters have come along with us that are kind of a part of the group as well and uh, collected with our record label. So that's been a really interesting thing. Nice. Um, I sing with a trio called Cana's Voice, yes, which is a, kind of a contemporary Southern gospel sort of thing. Although my wife will say they're not Southern gospel. It's <laughs> it's a different, but amazing singers there. Um, and then doing solo stuff. And then I'm also a worship pastor at a church in Cincinnati when time permits, which they are kind enough to be wow. gracious with my schedule. So and you juggle well. Yes. He juggles well. <laughs> right. I don't know. I try to anyway. Some days it's and like. And happen to be married with a yes, beautiful daughter. Yes, married with a 17 year old daughter. That's, That's right. awesome. Yeah. Now, Jody, you just started talking about the book. The book is where I get so excited. It's called So Far So Good but it was touch and go there for a while. I love that, that yeah. title because there's just so much more to it. Now in the book, you start touching on some very touchy topics that we don't normally hear about in, in church. Uh, you started with the sexual abuse of yourself as a seven year old boy. You were even very honest about at the age of 47 having suicidal thoughts. Yeah. Can you talk to us more about that? Because there's so much depth to it that we don't normally get to talk about in church. Sure. You know, I, I, well, we don't talk about depression a lot in church, um, and it's becoming more prevalent now, which I'm so thankful for that. But I, I know as a kid growing up in the church that I grew up in, you didn't discuss that. It just wasn't, especially as a male, you didn't discuss being a weak person at Man all. Up. Come yeah, on, as a matter of fact, I remember I had somebody, I posted something on social media recently, and someone from my church, their comment underneath was weak. Wow. And, oh, and, and it just no. kind of, at first, I, it, kind of struck me and then I thought they're a product of who they are. They're a product wow. of their environment. And yes. my goal, my objective, and what I feel like I'm called to do is to change that perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what the book was. So uh, the, you and I were talking before we went on about how there are seeds that are planted. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't just all, all of a sudden wake up one morning and you're like, oh, I'm depressed and right. I'm dealing with depression. It's little seeds that are planted throughout your life. Yes. Um, sometimes it takes 25, 30 years. Sometimes it takes five or six years, depending on the trauma you go through. But we've all experienced trauma. COVID has been a huge trauma for people. A chronic I've, active trauma for the whole oh, world. Absolutely. And as much as we don't like to say that, it has the isolation yes. that some people have felt That's because right. we're not meant for that. No. You know, we're meant to fellowship. We're meant to yes. be with each other. Yeah. So all of those things kind of plant seeds. And before you know it, um, and most of the time it is before you know it, people don't even realize it sneaks up on them. And they, they're like, what is wrong with me? Why do I feel the way that I feel? Why can't I get out of bed in the morning? Mm -hmm. Why can't I deal with these small problems that just seem inconsequential, but yet they're overwhelming to me? Right. And then even further, why do I not want to live anymore? Right. And for me, that's how it was. Obviously, we know it's the enemy. We right. know it's demonic. We know it's Satan who uses those seeds or those things to kind of slowly plant stuff. And even though the Bible says he's like a roaring lion, and I do believe he is, I also think that sometimes he does, he's real clever, real crafty, and he just drops bombs every once in a while. And I just found myself in a place um, in 2014 where I, I, it had piled up so much I was done. It's so good what you're talking about, Jody, and thank you for your transparency, for trusting us with this, because there are so many of us who have been walking through the valley of the shadow of death. As you said, during COVID, we were all on lockdown. When you think about incarceration, what's the worst type of imprisonment that yeah, exists? Isolation. It's isolation. Yeah. Now we just call it social distancing, and right. I'm not trying to be political, but right. it takes its toll. And so how do we overcome that? Because you are now speaking to many of us, even as Christians who struggled, what are some of the things you champion for mental health? Because that's what we're talking about is mental yeah, health. Absolutely. Well, I think the, f the most important thing for anyone to realize who's struggling with mental health is you are not alone. Awesome. And what we tend, and I know we live on an island here, but you are not an island. And we tend to make ourselves an island. When we start to struggle with depression, we start to say, nobody will understand. Nobody gets it. Nobody, 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 nobody. Right. And we make ourselves this little island. And then when you do that, you're self-isolating. You're making yourself... Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, impenetrable basically. And, and people will come and try to encourage you and you're not even hearing it anymore because you're yeah. so convinced that the feelings that you're feeling are legitimate and nobody's ever going to get mm -hmm. it. So what you need to understand is you're not alone, that there are people sitting to the left and to the right of you who are feeling the exact same way. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing you need to remember is that when you're not alone, there are people who are willing to talk to you and help you. Mm -hmm. People who have gone through this, people like me, who are now counselors, who are willing to sit down and just talk and listen, you know, and give you advice on how to get Absolutely. through this. And also, we need to recognize the fact that mental health is 99.9% .9 of the time a physical difficulty, a physical disability. Wow. It is not just, oh, well, you're, you're making things up or mm -hmm. you're imagining. It's, it's, it's all in your head. It is, it is a mental issue where we're not firing correctly. You yes. know? Serotonin is not being produced or all of those things. And I'm not a doctor. I right. just have been to a few. <laughs> but you're, and we're having hormonal imbalances exactly. or deficiencies. It's just like I said, if I need to wear glasses, I'm gonna put some glasses on. Exactly. And perhaps some of the mental health issues we face is because we're not having enough of the serotonin, the oxytocin, the dopamine right. influx into our bodies. Yeah, I, I will say that 99% of it is that. I, I, I think there are some that, that struggle with it that it's not, but I think for the most part if you are depressed or you're struggling with depression it is a chemical imbalance that you're dealing with and you know a lot of Christians struggle with going and taking antidepressants um, if you have heart disease like I do I take heart medication every day um, I don't struggle with taking that and it's because my heart can't produce the things it needs to run on its own so well Jody you champion the awareness of mental health yeah. and from a perspective <clears throat> of family or friends or loved ones how can we do better and how can we help? Maybe awareness, what would we be able to do or be cognizant of with regard to mental health? Yeah, that's good. Um, I, I think the first thing we need to stop being afraid of is to talk about it. Come you know, we, we don't address it. We don't talk about it in church. Um, and I think that because there's this whole faith component, which is the basis of Christianity. I mean, we believe in Christ through faith. Yes. Um, but we also think that if we don't, if we struggle with depression or even sometimes illness, mm -hmm. it's because we lack the faith to believe that God can heal us or that he's, and I just, I don't think that's the case at all. I think we need to be able to address these things head on yes. and talk about them and make an environment comfortable and accessible for people who are struggling mm -hmm. so that they feel free to come and ask for help. I love that. Because Making people are scared. Making an environment where they are comfortable yes. to speak. Yes. Now, I want to hold on to that thought right there, the perception of perfection and how coming to church is a transformative, truthful thing with you. We're going to take just a quick break but and leave you on a cliffhanger. I know it's getting meaty, and we'll be right back with a very special friend and more on this great topic right here at Living Hope TV. If I'm being honest, when we first came to New Hope, we were a bit nervous. I didn't know anyone here. This whole Christianity thing kind of weirded me out. But we both soon discovered that's exactly what we needed. Here at New Hope, I found a place where I belong. Where I found my new besties. <laughs> a place where my children can grow up. And a place to grow old with a young at heart. Here at New Hope, I found my voice. A place where I can be creative. And worship God with my whole heart. I found freedom. A second chance in life. A place where I'm loved just as I am. New Hope is home. It's family. There's a place for you. So join us this weekend at New Hope Oahu. And soon you'll find that even today, hope is alive. For more information, visit enewhope.org. Welcome back, Ohana. We are here with Jody McBrayer, who is family to us. You know, you touched on something that is very dear to us here locally because we are prideful people. And we do worry about shame and not opening up. In fact, we're always told, don't wash your laundry in public. And so therefore, we are really reticent to come forth, sure. to seem weak, to seem like we have problems. And so thank you for that. Yes. Now. Don and I love this quote of yours, and I'm going to read it because I want to make sure I get it correctly. If you could expound on that, it says, keep going. I can't tell you when it's going to get better, but I can tell you it is going to get better and you're not alone. Yeah. Can you expound on that? Absolutely. Well, I have watched a struggle for years with some things and 
it's been like we've had moments where we look up in heaven and go, <laughs> hello, <laughs> you're not paying attention, you know. And God says, you know, I'll never put more on you than you can bear, but it's like, are you paying attention? Because <laughs> this is really hard. Um, and he does it in his own time, you know. And I remember when I was a kid, we used, I lived in Tampa, Florida, and we had this thing called the Gasparilla Parade. And it was this big thing every year. Technically, Jose Gaspar was a pirate that invaded, and they celebrated that. Never understood that. But anyway, they'd have the parade, and I was little, and there'd be thousands of people, and I could never see. So my dad would pick me up and put me on his shoulders. And then I could see what was coming and where it was going. Yes. That's the perspective that God has. Wow. We don't have yes. that. God sees yep. what's happened. He sees where we're going. Mm -hmm. He's got it all planned out. Yes, sir. And sometimes he's like, I'm going to put you on my shoulders, and I'm going to give you a glimpse. Mm -hmm. And other times he's like, you're going to need to trust me. Because through the trust comes the refining. Through the trust comes what I'm really trying to make you to be. And when you get to where you're going, you're going to be better because of it. That's and so that's what I, I have to hold on to that promise yeah. that God is refining me and making me better through the difficulty. But it will be better. That's so wow. good. I love that. As you're sharing this about what you walk through, those low times and depression, this has happened while you've been writing, singing, worship leader, mm -hmm. ministering for decades. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that what came to my mind is, we see you up there at the pulpit or on the stage singing, yeah. and there's this persona that you project. But I bet you, from what you said, there were times that you were mm -hmm. on the stage oh, yeah. and it was a whole different persona of what you were doing versus what was going on inside That's of your right. heart. How did you deal with that? I think about the yeah. Psalms. I think about David, yeah. who wrote the Psalms. I, I always joke, and, and my friend Mark Lowry, you guys know Mark Lowry, the comedian and singer. So we've traveled with him some, and he used to say all the time, if Prozac had existed during the time of David, <laughs> it would have leveled out. There would be no Psalms. It would yeah. have just leveled the whole thing out, you know. But because of David and his relationship, and, and I, I love the fact that David was a, he was a dude, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like you think yeah. about, he killed a man so that he could sleep with his wife, you know? Yes. David was not perfect. And God still said, you're a man after my own heart, David. And I think the reason why was because even in his sin and in his difficulty, David sought God. Yes. Oh, he'd cry out to God and he'd say, I'm gonna praise you, I'm gonna dance on the tables. And then he'd say, God purge me with hyssop for I am undone, I am oh. unclean. And it's like, that's who we are, Come you on. know? And I would find sometimes, I'll start crying. I would find in the difficulties that I was experiencing in my life that God would meet me in some of the most amazing opportunities and yeah. his spirit would fall. And I think it was because I didn't have anything of my own to give. Yeah. And when you don't have anything of your own, that's when his Holy Spirit steps in and just takes it. Wow. And so I'm so thankful for the opportunities. There were times when I should not have been up there, yeah. Yeah. but, but God steps in and says, I, I got you. Listen, I know all your mess. Mm -hmm. I know all the stupid stuff you've done. I, I know what you thought 10 minutes before you walked on stage, but I'm still going to work because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. and, and was that what you thought of? You thought of the Psalms or you thought of what God oh, yeah. had done and that gave you the Absolutely. ability to switch yep. and do what you're called to do. Yeah. Honestly, I've thought about David a lot. Yeah. I've honestly yeah, thought if David can get up, if God found favor in David, yeah. then I'm good. Amen. You know. Amen. You know, as you share, just as Pastor John was asking, you know, we're not always this picture perfect. It's not the perception of perfection as you deal with so well, friend. But thank you, thank you, and thank you. Now, I know there's a certain question we have that's going to lead us into the song. I'm going to let Pastor John ask it because it's been burning on his heart. And thank you again for your courage and your bravery. Thank you for championing mental health, especially in the church. Mahalo. In this final thought, and whether or not you want to even share a scripture with it. You had shared earlier about this song that we're going to hear and why it means so much to you. And I remember standing there and realizing that in what you shared with us, it can give so many people hope not to listen to what the enemy tries to rob, steal, and destroy, sometimes through peers and even people close to us but what God enabled you to, to do and persevere through yeah. and why this song is so special. Uh, shall we 
save the rest as a surprise, or would you like to speak into it a I little bit? We talk about yeah, it. Come on. Yeah, you know, we I can always talk yes. so far. <laughs> yes, because, well, yes. Yeah, so this the song is called So Far So Good. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's the the title of the book came from the song. Um, but of course it's about my life too. But this was the first song I ever recorded professionally. Mm -hmm. I left college and got a, became a part of this popular traveling group and they immediately put us in the studio to make a record and I had never been in a professional studio setting before and I went in and I kept messing up the song and the producer that was in there was somebody that I had looked up to for years had written songs that I loved and so I was a little nervous you know and I kept messing up and they left the talk back button on without me knowing and when I said well there goes my professional singing career and they're like we don't have to look forward to that this guy there's no way you know and, and, and I I just sat back with my headphones on. They didn't know I could hear. And I listened to them as they kind of tore me apart. And I was young, I was green, you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting here singing a song called So Far So Good, I was 21, how could I know, you know? But to have your peers and to have people and have your career start that way, I carried that through years and years and wow. years of my life and my career and feeling like I wasn't, was never good enough. And it really wasn't until, um, it, was, it wasn't until recently that God has said, listen, all of the things that you've been through, all of the stuff that you felt insignificant for or ill-prepared for, or I was in all of that, Come you on. know? And, and I, I think that even in the tears that we cry, God uses those yes. to water the ground so something can grow. I think there's purpose in everything. And I've seen his purposes throughout my life and I still see them today. It's changed my perspective. And I just wanna say, change your perspective. Quit looking at life for what it is and start looking at it in the spiritual because God uses everything and every experience to make us who we are. And I'm so grateful for that. Wow. So good. This is the song that's coming. It's the book I encourage you to grab and be blessed by. As you just heard, the hearts overflow through his mouth, through song, Jody McBrayer. So far, so good, but it was touch and go there for a little while. <laughs> and that's just the truth of it. Thank you so much for joining us, oh, dear gosh. friend, for becoming Ohana with all of us. And as the word of the Lord says, that God works all things exactly. together for good. And that's what Mr. McBrayer just prayed and blessed Please us with. Here's the song Aloha by again, he himself, Jody, Jody McBrayer. Prayer and Jesus Christ is called So Far So Good. This is uh, my personal thank you note, my personal love song to Jesus for all that he's done for me. It's getting harder to remember, feeling lost and alone, because it seems we've been together for so long. I've been living in the moment So I never stop to measure All the miles that pass the places where we've gone When I try to count the ways your love has carried me it Doesn't take me very long to see have come so far you have been so good when I trace the road that we've traveled I gotta tell you Lord I look at where we are and I see where I could have been I need to say again you've been so Can anybody say amen this morning? There may be others who have wondered why you kept on believing in the person that you knew I could become. Oh, even though I wasn't worthy, you're the one whose love was faithful to complete the work in me that you Girl, oh, and now I don't know all the mountains that are left for us to climb. Oh, but I know when I reach the end, I'll find.
when I trace the road that we can travel, I gotta tell you, Lord, I look at where we are, but I see where I could have been, and I need to say again, you've been so Wow, that was truly an anointed appointment with the Holy Spirit through our friend Jody McBrayer. It is truly one of the good things about Hawaii that a simple talk story time, or as we say in Hawaiian, vola au session, can lead to the weaving together of hearts forever. If you want to see Jody live, I'm excited to announce. He'll be back in Hawaii with us next month in September with his Grammy-nominated Dove Award-winning group, Avalon. chee -hoo! That is right. Jody and Avalon will be with us live in person at New Hope Oahu to celebrate our 27th anniversary. Avalon will be performing a concert on Friday, September 9th, and then they'll join us for the weekend services on September 10th and 11th. Come and join us. We'll be there and we hope to see you there too. Absolutely. Well, Ohana, thank you again and again for joining in another epic episode and talk story time with us. We like to end with a Hawaiian saying or word. Today's word, Oni pa'a, stand strong. In the face of adverse challenges and tough times, Oni pa'a, yeah. It was the motto of Hawaii's last regent, Queen Lili'uokalani, spoken to her beloved people in a very difficult chapter of Hawaii's history. Oni pa'a. It's a compelling charge to each of us in these tough times. Stand strong in God's power, freely available to all, and that includes you. And as always, our hope is that you will always have a living hope. Aloha.